We're back here at the Wanamaker Tulsa Arm Show. I'm joined again by Jim Sapika, director of the National Firearms Museum. Jim, thank you for coming back. And, and, and man, are we having some fun out here in Tulsa. There, there's so much neat stuff now. We've seen a lot of long guns. Yep. Not a whole lot uh, of revolvers and handguns. Uh, so I'm glad we, we've got Jim Van Gilder here from Dallas, Texas, with some really neat revolvers. We Tell got us about a beautiful them. pair to, to go with. These are, of course, the classic revolver, the Colt Single Action Army, the Peacemaker, Model 1873, uh, the classic uh, six gun that's associated with the Old West. And these, uh, uh, Jim, how long have you had these? I've had these guns about 10 years. Okay, and where'd they come from? I bought them from an estate from a friend of mine that uh, when he died, uh, his wife had asked me to take a look and these are some guns that I picked out. Good, good. Well, you have impeccable taste, I must yeah. say. <laughs> yep. Good choices. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see the beautiful condition on these, the, yeah. the dark original Colt factory blue and the case color on the frame, the beautiful classic uh, modeled uh, uh, case coloring on the frame. Of course, this model was introduced in 1873 and uh, uh, is so closely associated with the American West. Uh, you've seen this in all the all the westerns. Uh, John Wayne always carried one, and uh, up through the modern westerns. And in fact, it was a, a very predominant handgun in the American West. Now, these are more recent manufacture, and the story of the production of the Colt Single Action Army is it was made as a working gun from 1873 up until World War II, and it was a popular gun. Uh, it was in available in a wide range of calibers, but a lot of them were big, big heavy working calibers. A lot of guys love the ergonomics of the gun. It fits their hands just right. Uh, they're uh, uh, mechanically very reliable. The single action uh, is a, uh, a reliable design. And they were popular as a working gun up till the beginning of World War II when a lot of projections shifted over to more uh, so-called modern designs, the double action uh, revolvers, the semi-automatics, and uh, Colt stopped producing them. They assembled a few, uh, a few out of leftover parts. But uh, uh, after the war, uh, the American Western really kicked in in popularity and uh, 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 demand came back for the Colt Single Action Army and the Colt factory rose to that demand. About 1956, they reintroduced the Single Action Army with a, a few minor changes, uh, basically essentially the same as the original. But uh, they started it over with a new serial number range the others had just been a set of numbers, uh, starting with one and, and going on up into six digits. Uh, when they came out with the, uh, the next uh, iteration of them, they uh, started putting an SA suffix at the end of the serial numbers. So it might be uh, one, two, three, four, SA uh, for single action. And that's what we call the second generation of Colt single action armies. And that, uh, that run continued for about 20 years up to the mid-1970s when it was discontinued for a short time. And then uh, 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 the demand was still out there. In 1976, Colt reintroduced the gun again, this time calling it the third generation. And uh, uh, they went a couple years and they were getting up towards 100,000 SA and they decided to take the, uh, take the SA and put it on the front of the serial number. So generally, if you see a Colt single action army and the serial numbers appear uh, a number of places on the older guns, but on the modern guns, they appear right here on the frame. If there is an, if there's no letters on it, it's probably a first generation. If there's an SA at the end, it's probably a second generation. If there's an SA prefix, it's a third generation. Now these guns, uh, uh, they are interesting in that this one has the uh, SA prefix, so we know it's a third generation gun. It's a fairly early gun. It was made in about 1978. Uh, it's a straightforward gun, beautiful case colored frame, blue, the uh, uh, desirable uh, seven and a half inch barrel, 44 special, and nice caliber. Uh, none of that configuration is particularly rare, but it's a very classic design. Uh, and uh, as a very early third generation gun, uh, it's probably has a value of somewhere in the uh, uh, 
$1,250 to $1,600 range. Uh, the fact that it's so early in that production, and especially the condition, the condition on this gun is just about as close to perfect as you can find uh, a very exceptional uh, condition gun. This single action army, uh, one thing you may notice right off the bat, the only apparent difference is that this is engraved, factory engraving. Uh, this is probably about C coverage. They start, uh, their coverage goes A, B, C, and D, with A being the least and D being the most, but factory engraving will enhance the value of the gun considerably. And if we look at the serial number of this gun, it has the SA at the end of the serial number range. So generally you would expect this to be a second generation gun. However, the serial number is in the 93,000 range, which is when they were making the third generation guns before they moved the serial number. So this is one of the very earliest third generation guns. And as a matter of fact, it was probably made in the same year as this one, 1978, wow. when they switched over. So these are uh, these are just almost twins. Wow! This does have the very lovely Colt Factory engraving added to it, uh, which I think is going to add. You, you start with the uh, the you know 12 to 15 hundred dollar value of this gun, and then you add another two to three thousand dollars for the uh, Colt Factory engraving, and also the fact. Uh, that, that's an, uh, I mean Colt Single Action Army guys, they get detailed on their variations. <laughs> and so it's 45 Colt, which is the most common caliber, but very desirable. And uh, uh, you get to the fact that it's an early third generation oh, gun, yeah. but with the second generation serial, serial number hour. configuration and factory engraved. Yeah. So, you know, each of those adds a little rarity bite for a single action collector, and they're gonna love that condition. So, so keep uh, it busy all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, a, it's a wonderful pair wow. of guns, uh, and uh, uh, you, you pick them up in very nice condition, and you're keeping them in good yeah. condition, uh, and you're to be congratulated on them. They're a good good. pair. Thank well, thank you very much. I appreciate you looking at them. Thank you, I enjoyed thank it. Thank you for bringing them out and bringing them on you. the Curator's Corner. Thank really you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.